All right. Uh, welcome to uh, Blue Pen Lane here. Let's talk a little bit about momentum. Momentum is a physics quantity. Here's the formula. It's very simple. Uh, it's just mass times velocity. I call it the keep goingness of an object. Okay. And by that, I mean that, you know, some combination of mass and velocity makes you tend to keep going. So if you're in a collision, uh, uh, you're going to keep going your way, right? Uh, if you either have a lot of mass or maybe a lot of velocity or, or both, right? Okay. So uh, you might want to write this formula down. There it is. It's really pretty simple. Um, but this is the notion, and here's where momentum is actually useful, okay? Is that if you consider a head-on collision, okay? If you have a small thing hitting a big thing, right? They could stop dead. And I show this on the air track. I'll show it to you in class. But you just get a, a big air track glider and a little one, right? And the question is, what speed do you, you know, if this thing's moving at, say, this speed, right? How fast does this guy have to go? And, of course, the answer is, it's got to go faster. It's got less mass, right? And the way you would calculate that is that you would set their momentums equal, their momenta, I think is how you say it, right? You set their momenta equal to each other. Big mass times small velocity could equal small mass times big velocity, okay? And then, you know, here's an example, right? The, uh, what is the momentum of a 145-gram baseball going uh, 90, 40 meters per second, which is 90 miles per hour, right? Uh, well, this is simple, right? It's m times v, so it's 0.145 kilograms, right, times 40 meters per second. And if you multiply that, you get uh, 5.8, right? 5.8 kilogram meters per second. Ta-da! Those are the units of momentum. There's no like shorter wavelength. There's nothing like a joule or a watt or anything. It's just kilogram meters per second. Okay. Let me show you something else that's cool about momentum. Okay. Uh, let's have these guys collide with each other, right? There they are. Right. There's Fran running along. You know, she's going four meters per second that way, and Joe's going. He's got funny legs. He's running this way, right? Uh, if she's going. Six, uh, she's 60 kilograms going four meters per second. Uh, her momentum is uh, 60 times four, right? That's 240 kilogram meters per second, right? Okay, the question is how fast does he have to run to have the same momentum so that they stop? Well, that's 80 times V has got to equal 240 kilogram meters per second, right? Well, V has got to be 3 meters per second, right? Okay. So so that's kind of cool, right? We can, we can actually predict how fast he's got to go, okay? But if we look at this thing, if we, you know, say this is their picture before, right? And their picture after is, you know, this, this mess, this jumble of, you know, limbs or whatever, right? Okay. Here they've stopped. There's no momentum. Before they collided, their total momentum was, well, 60 times I'm going to make positive this way, right? So, so her velocity was positive 4, right? And his velocity is negative 3 because he's going this way, right? So this momentum is positive 240, and then this momentum is negative 240. Afterwards, the momentum is 0, right? Yeah, let's draw a little box around that, right? Afterwards, the momentum is 0, before the momentum was zero. All collisions, this is true. If you add up the total momentum before the collision, it'll always equal the momentum after the collision. This is a very cool thing. This is why we're going to study momentum, because we can predict what happens after collisions.